Yeah! yeah, yeah. What's up, y'all? <laughs> this is your boy, D-Mike. Hello, boys and girls. It's Miss Anna Mensa, and here we are for another social distance story time. Today's story is called How to Read a Story by Kate Mesner. I'm sure many of you already have started reading and you know how to read a story, but this is for my friends who may or may not know how to truly enjoy a story. There are 10 steps in this story and let's see if at the end of the story you can remember what those 10 steps are okay here we go how to read a story by kate messner illustrated by mark siegel step one find a story a good one it can have princesses and castles if you like that sort of thing or witches and trolls, as long as they're not too scary. Step two, find a reading buddy, a good one. A buddy can be older or younger or a person your age or maybe not a person at all. Make sure your reading buddy is nice and snuggly and make sure you both like the book. If you don't agree, go back to step one. Sometimes it takes a few tries to find just the right book. Step three, find a cozy reading spot. Outside is fun, but not if it's very cold. Unless you have thick woolen blankets and hats and scarves and cups of steaming hot cocoa. And not if it's very hot, unless you have trees to shade you from the sun, a hammock to catch cool breezes, and tall glasses of icy lemonade. Inside is good, couches are cozy, so are chairs big enough for two. Just be careful not to get stuck. Step four, look at the book's cover. Can you guess what it's about? Read the title. That might be a clue. Step five, open the book. This is the exciting part. Read the story in a loud, clear voice, not too slow and not too fast. You can point to words if you like, but you don't have to do that. Step six, when the characters talk, whatever's being said, say it in a voice to match who's talking. I will save the kingdom. I am the most powerful in all the land. I'm hungry for lunch. Soon the castle will be mine. Beep. Step seven. No matter what you read, hold the book so your buddy can see the pictures. Buddies get impatient when they can't see well. Step eight. If there are words you don't know, try sounding them out or looking at the pictures to see what makes sense. They were afraid the dragon would burn down the castle. Oh, the castle. If you need a break, you can pause for a minute and talk to your reading buddy to predict what might happen next. Will the castle catch on fire? Will the princess tame the dragon? Will the robot marry the princess? Will the horse make friends with the dragon? Will the dragon eat them all for lunch? Step nine. When you get to the exciting parts, make your voice sound exciting too. Who dares disturb me in my cave? The dragon growled. Or, oh dear, oh no. The robot was so scared, all his metal parts rattled. What did they do? Or, but the princess tackled that dragon and held him down. You must promise you'll leave our kingdom in peace. When you and your buddy can't stand it a second longer, turn the page to read how things work out. Step 10. When the book is over, say, The End. And 
then, if it was a really good story, go right back to the beginning and start all over again. So what'd you think, boys and girls? Did you like that one? Let's see if you remembered all of the steps. Step one was to find a story. Step two was to find a reading buddy. Step three was to find a cozy reading spot. Step four was to look at the book's cover. Step five was to open the book. Step six was to use voices that match the characters. Step seven was to hold the book so that your buddy can read it. Step eight was to sound out the words you don't know or use the pictures to help you read the story. Step nine was to make your voice sound exciting when you read. And step 10 was to remember to say the end. And if that book was good enough, read it all over again. And if this video was good enough, boys and girls, watch it all over again. Until next time, see you later.